welcome to the New York Stereoscopic Association. Thank you for joining us. We're here to share our love of this immersive art form, to see through the eyes of those with cameras that see the way people do. By sharing the images that move them, stereographers welcome you to visit the places they've been and to literally stand in their shoes and gaze at a moment, frozen in time just as they experienced it. It's our sincere hope that you'll accept our invitation to share your images with us. Membership in the NYSA is not required. Greetings, comrades. I'm Max Klaxon, Supreme Commander of Mental Security. And I'm here to invite you to play the ultimate power game. So put on your freedom filters, and we'll bring you both points of view, the red and the blue. We're in real trouble. It's not a joke. I'm always behind the eight ball, but I feel good about what we're doing. <laughs> I have totally manipulated a lot of people. Like, believe me, I get standing ovations. The other day I ordered 4,000 television sets to watch myself. It's time to reject enemy mind control and demand better mind control. It's time, once again, to play authoritarian fire. Some say he bears a suspicious re there he goes. Sir, some says some some say he bears a suspicious resemblance to New York City-based film maker and multimedia artist Maximus Clark, which he strenuously denies, and I can't see any resemblance myself. And now, coming to us from a secure, undisclosed location in New York City, here's Max Claxon. Greetings, comrade. Back at you, Max. Tell us about authoritarian idol. Authoritarian Idol is a show that I produce and perform every four years during presidential election campaign season. The first version was in 2008, and I created all new versions of the show in 2012 and 2016. Right now, I'm preparing another version for 2020, and as in past editions of the show, I will be performing a number of songs and also interviewing digital avatars of the presidential candidates. The main thrust of authoritarian idol is that our political process has turned into reality television and the candidates market themselves to us as larger than life characters competing for the grand prize, absolute power. That absolute power thing sounds great, but of course, this is not a great time for live shows. So how can people see authoritarian idol this fall? Yes, normally I do these shows in clubs, art spaces, and other venues with a live audience. Since that's not possible right now, I've decided to take authoritarian idol online. The show will be streamed on YouTube Live on Sunday, October 25th. For full details, you can follow Max Klaxon on Twitter or Facebook, and check www.klaxon.info for more information. That's www.klaxon.info. And this streaming version of Authoritarian Idol will be in glorious anaglyph 3D, like the previous clip, correct? Correct. If you have a pair of 3D glasses that look like this, you'll be able to watch the show in 3D on any screen. If you have a 3D television or projector or a virtual reality headset, there will also be a special version of the stream designed for those devices. Excellent. So once again, just to be clear, 
That will be streaming on Sunday, October 25th. Are you keeping the exact time secret for a reason? At this point, that information is classified. Ah, one last question. Can you explain exactly what better mind control is? Of course. Politicians, corporations, and the media are constantly bombarding us with their attempts to control our minds. Fortunately, I have a solution my own brand of better mind control. The melodies and rhythms of my music and the images in my videos are so infectious, they are guaranteed to override all the other signals that are being beamed into your brain. But I promise, once I have control of your mind, I will use this awesome power for good, not for evil, at least most of the time. All right. Thanks for joining us. That's Max Claxon. And I have one word of advice, which I can give you, Max. And I can tell you this from the heart. It's lonely at the top. Indeed. Well, you know, I think we had some Max Claxon fans trying to, to bomb us. But are they, are, do, your, do, your, do your fans generally behave that way? They usually follow my orders uh, fanatically. So in that case, you ordered them to bomb us. Well, listen, you know, I want to be your friend, Max, because personally, anybody who wears glasses like me, I got to be friendly with. It's just a... Uh, it would be best to be on my good side. That's what I was thinking. That's just what I was thinking. Well, thank you very much. Now, just so everybody knows, um, all our guests will be available in the after party for questions. And um, I don't think you're going to get any answers out of, out of Mr. Klaxon. I'm going to call you Mr. Klaxon at this point. Um, but I'm sure he's going to have an interesting story to tell. Or, you know what? You can become a follower. What, what are Klax and Follower? Are, are they devotees or followers? Have you concluded how, to, how that's going? Uh, I, I generally refer to them as the Klaxon youth. The Klaxon youth. Well, hail to you. I'll see you in the, I'll, Oh, is that, the, is that it? That's the salute, yes. Wow, that... Wow. Does it make a difference on which side? Not really. No. Is, is that the, is that the anagram? Better. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Claxon, I'll see you in the after party. Thank you. Welcome to today's edition of the Anaglyph Jukebox. You never know what you'll find on the old jukebox. Let's press B31. Okay, we've got Steve Ditko 3D. Steve Ditko, co-creator of Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, characters now part of a multi-billion dollar cinema franchise, died two years ago, age 90, on June 29th, 2018. He received a New York Times obit. This is notable because the wider world only seems to take notice of a comic book artist when his or her work is adapted to film. The Times has only recently granted comic book creators obituaries. Created as disposable entertainment for children, today's fan can buy the catalog of the Ditko One Man Museum show at the Palma de Mallorca in Spain, from the fall of 2016. It's called Ditko Unleashed, an American Hero, and it weighs almost six pounds. Steve Ditko from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, is as fascinating a character as any he created, and none of his work has ever been converted to 3D with this exception. Substance, a character created by Jack C. Harris, designed and drawn by Ditko specifically for 3D, with 3D conversion by Ray Zone. And the 1950s public domain stories reprinted in this same issue of Substance. Ditko actually worked on the first and only issue of the 1953 Captain 3D by Jack Kirby. He and Mort Meskin, another phenomenal artist, inked that book. After serving in the Army, 
Ditko studied in 1950 with Batman artist Jerry Robinson under the GI Bill at the Cartoonist and Illustrator School, co-founded by the great Tarzan artist Bern Hogarth. This became the School of Visual Arts, and no one ever heard of it again. Ditko created or revamped many characters over his long career, including The Creeper and Shade the Changing Man for DC, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and Speedball for Marvel, The Blue Beetle, Captain Adam, Congo, Gorgo, and The Question for Charlton Comics of Derby, Connecticut. This last character was Ditko's first public expression of the black and white moral view he took from his deep involvement in the objectivist philosophy of Ayn Rand, which would eventually overwhelm his mainstream career. Far from just drawing to a script, Ditko was an active plotter as well. Captions and dialogues were added after the story had been drawn. Stanley said this, all I had to do was give Steve a one-line description of the plot, and he'd be off and running. He'd take those skeleton outlines I had given him and turn them into classic little works of art that ended up being far cooler than I had any right to expect. Ditko later created and independently published Mr. A, an avenging hero whose stories are more like mini rants, outbursts of angry finger-pointing. Most of his later work involved self-published mini-comics with partner Robin Snyder, his former editor at Charlton Comics. These were more illustrated lectures than comic book stories. Ditko was reclusive in his lifetime, giving no full-length detailed interviews and leaving few letters behind. He simply kept creating and drawing in that same office for decades in Midtown Manhattan, long after his work was no longer popular in the comic book marketplace. Ditko also shared a studio at 43rd Street and 8th Avenue with the famed fetish artist Eric Stanton from 1958 to 1968. Ditko denied that he had ever worked on any of Stanton's pages or Stanton on his, but Stanton's account contradicts this. In Blake Bell's series on Ditko for Fantagraphics, Volume 5, Dripping with Fear, Bell identifies several Stanton-Ditko collaborations. Short tales like Midnight Maiden, 1962, and Divorce Agreement from 1965-66 were filled with bosomy women in underwear in bondage or fetish poses. But I'll leave that subject to Betty Page. Stanton also says Ditko inked three major fetish books for him, Sweeter Gwendolyn, Confidential TV, and The Kinky Hook, all while producing Spider-Man and Doctor Strange at the same drafting table. In a 1988 interview, Stanton recalled that his contributions to Spider-Man was almost nil. He said that he and Ditko worked on storyboards together, and I added a few ideas. I think I added the business about the webs coming out of his hands. Ghost Stereos. Hi, this is Gordon Now, aka World of Depth. You may know that various spirits and specters have been popular subjects for stereo cards since the mid 1900s, especially if you caught Denis Pellerin's great keynote talk on this subject at NSA 3DCon 2020. You may also know that these ghost stereos were photographed using long exposure or possibly multiple exposure techniques, sometimes with glass reflections, and generally with two cameras or a single stereo camera. But many people today take their own stereo photos using a single 2D camera in sequential fashion. Can you still make a ghost stereo this way? Spoiler not spoiler, yes you can, and I'll show you exactly how to take and process such a ghost stereo. Your first thought may be that this would be quite difficult, because in order to get a transparent ghost in 3D, you need to essentially composite two stereo pairs, one with the ghost, and one without the ghost, 
And how can you make these two stereo pairs be nearly identical so you can composite them? Well, to make the stereo bass the same, you could make your side-to-side -side movement just once and take the four needed shots in this order. First, the left eye view, the background with no ghost. Then the left eye view with your ghost to be added in. Then you remove the ghost, shift your camera to the right, and take the right eye background view. And finally, you add the ghost back for another right eye view. So that solves the stereo bass problem, but how do you get the ghost to return to exactly the same position? The answer is you don't. You just need to change your order of shots again. Take your two right eye views in the opposite order. That way, your steps become 1. Shoot the left background. 2. Repeat with the ghost added in. 3. The ghost remains in place while you shift the camera and take the right view. And 4. Remove the ghost and shoot the right background. This gives you two stereo pairs with the same stereo base and the same ghost position. Now, with your four shots, you may already know what to do and have suitable programs for doing it, but in case you don't, I'll show you how to process them using PhotoP, which, as you can read, is a free online program akin to Photoshop. It has many great functions, but I'll show you only what you need for this. When you go to PhotoP.com and scroll down, you'll see this screen. We'll start by making a ghostly composite out of the two left eye views, so first, drag and drop photo number one of four into the main black area. It should be displayed like this. For the second photo, and this is important, go to the top menu to File, and then select Open and Place. This will add the second photo to the same project. You should now see your second photo. You've created two stacked layers, with the second photo on top, as shown in the Layers Guide, circled at right. To see both photos, or rather, to make the top layer transparent, go to the box for Opacity, circled here, and change the value to 50%. You should see something like this with a transparent, ghostly effect already visible. However, unless you used a stabilizing tripod, you'll also likely notice some weird offsets, as with the floor tiles shown here. So we need to align the two layers. First, select both layers by holding Shift and clicking on each one, and it might be a different button depending on your computer. Both layers should appear with a darker background, as circled here at right. Once you've done that, go to the top menu, Edit, and select Auto Align. This will take a few seconds, but you should see the screen update, showing now a nice and neat ghostly scene. The next two steps are optional, but useful if anything changed in the background between your two shots. First, select the top layer only. Next, go to the top menu, Layer, and Rasterize. What we'll do now is cut out the ghost using a blurry border. We will then use only the ghost cutout instead of the entire second picture, and this will reduce discrepancies with the first picture. First, go to the Lasso Select tool, which is the third one from the top on the left, the oval with the squiggly line. If you click and hold it, a submenu will pop up. Select the Polygonal Lasso tool as shown in blue. Second, to get the aforementioned blurry selection border, go to near the top, and for Feather, type in 20 pixels. Select only the top layer, using the layer guide at right. Now, click a series of points around the ghost, leaving a healthy margin like this one. It can be a very approximate shape. If you can't see the ghost clearly enough though, temporarily turn the layer opacity back to 100%. You will see straight lines automatically created between points you click. You can change the view by pinching and zooming, by scrolling, or by using the view menu at top. PhotoP will also automatically scroll your view when your cursor approaches an edge of the display window. Once you draw a complete loop, it will change and become a dotted curved line like this one. We want to make this cutout into a new layer. Go to the top menu, Edit, and Copy. Now go to Layer, New, and Layer via Copy. This will add a third layer on top of the previous two. If you want to double check it worked, you can hide the previous two layers by clicking on the eye symbols next to them in the layer guide. The checkerboard pattern here is what PhotoP uses to indicate blank space. That you can see it through the ghost shows the new ghost layer is indeed transparent. Speaking of checkerboard and blank space, you might have noticed some checkerboard at the edges of our image, and I don't mean the floor checkerboard here. These areas were created when the layers were moved in order to align them. But now let's get rid of this excess blank space. First, as circled at right, select all the layers by shift-clicking as before, but hide the top two layers via the eye symbols, so only your original photo number one shows. Second, go to the top menu, Image, and Trim. If everything works, you should see the display change and all the checkerboard disappear. Now you can unhide the top layer and see what the finished left eye view of your ghost looks like. 
However, I will note that I think PhotoP has a bug related to the trim function. Sometimes it just doesn't work, unfortunately. In that case, you would have to manually crop out the checkerboard areas. Anyway, at this stage, you could do things like adjust the transparency of your ghost by changing the opacity if you like. Afterwards, you can go to File, Export, and save this left eye view. If you want, you can also hide certain layers and export only the background or only the ghost. Next, you'll repeat this photo P process with the remaining two original photos to construct the right eye view. That will give you your stereo pair, which you can then process like you would any other. Here is the end result for this ghost stereo after using Stereo Photo Maker's auto align tool and doing some manual cropping and framing. If you followed along and made your own, congratulations! As a bonus, I'll mention something else about Stereo Photo Maker. You may have noticed that when you auto align a stereo pair, and that's different than the auto-align in PhotoP, by the way. By default, it creates files to save the alignment data. If later on, you reopen the same pair and go to auto-align it again, it will give you the prompt seen here. The option, in other words, to apply the same adjustments as before. But guess what? If you have a new stereo pair that's the same size and give it the same file names as the original pair, you can use this prompt to apply the same adjustments to a different pair. So why is this useful? Well, it allows you to create a separate stereo pair for each layer, but all with the same 3D alignment. For example, in this variant, I exported just the background from PhotoP, and used Stereo Photo Maker to auto-align it, and also make a depth map from it. I used that map to apply a 3D darkness effect, kind of a black fog that I wanted to be in the back of the room, including behind where the ghost would be. Hence, I had to work on the background pair without the ghost. Then I exported just the ghost layer from PhotoP, gave it the same file names, and thereby used Stereo Photo Maker to auto-align it in the same way. Thus, I was able to recombine the layers without any problems. If I had auto-aligned the ghost layer without using the prompt and the previous report files, chances are it would have aligned the pair in a slightly different enough way to throw off a clean recombination. So that's a little Stereo Photo Maker hack for you. So there you have it! It takes just four photos and photo P, and optionally Stereo Photo Maker, to create a sequential ghost stereo. Please try this out. You can find more tutorials from me, and also send any questions at worldofdepth.com. Thanks for watching, and remember, everything is better in 3D.